the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let us pray. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, is my Father, we thank you for your mercy that endureth over our life. We say thank you. Lord, here we are once again to hear from you, O Lord. We pray, Lord, that in the name that is above every other name, you make our heart a receptive heart to receive your word this afternoon, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray in every area that we have not been faithful to you, O Lord. We pray the grace to be faithful as from this moment henceforth. You release unto us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I hide myself behind the cross, O Lord. We pray, I pray this afternoon, Lord, that you use my mouth as your mouthpiece, O Lord, to bring forth your word, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, marvelous Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray praise the lord please i want us to rise on our feet we'll just take one prayer point i'll be reading from first corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 say let a man media please if you can project let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ and stewards of the mysteries of god moreover it is required in steward that a man be found faithful. We are going to say, oh Lord, oh Lord, in every area that I have not been faithful to you, I receive grace this afternoon to be faithful in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's turn it to prayer. In every area that we've not been faithful, oh Lord, in your business, in your assignment, oh Lord, this afternoon, I receive grace, O oh Lord, to be faithful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive grace to be faithful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I receive grace to be faithful. Thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please, let's have our seats. As we all know, this week is our evangelism week. And I will be talking to us on the topic, evangelism, our urgent mandate, mandate and commission. And our Bible passage will be taken from Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, I will be reading from verse 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 to 20. I read. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have, command, I have commanded you. 
And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the mighty name of Jesus. This afternoon, I just want to lay a foundation. And as time permits us, we are going to build on it. If you look at from the passage that we've read, after Jesus Christ resurrected, he appeared to the disciples. If you read it from verse 16, say, And the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. After he resurrected, he appeared to the disciples. Some of them doubted that this is not Jesus. The same thing that happens what in the case of Peter. On what our pastor, Pastor Ojo, ministered to us last week. They were praying for Peter. But when he appeared, they were still doubting that he's not the one. So likewise, Jesus Christ also. And after they appeared, he told them in verse 20, he said, they should go ye, therefore. Go ye, that he told them, he's not pleading with them. He's a command. And that is why he's a mandate that every child of God must what? Obey. Irrespective of whatever level you belong to, in as much as you are a child of God, you are expected to obey what? The divine mandates. Evangelism is the mandate, assignment, and commission given to disciples and, of course, Christians to witness Christ to the unsaved souls and to the world at large, bringing them to the saving grace and knowledge and acceptance of Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So when we go out for evangelism, what should be our primary aim? What we see now is a lot of people go out for evangelism, but they are not what? Preaching the gospel, but rather we are preaching church. Praise the Lord. All what we go out for when we say we are going for evangelism is just for people to come to our church. But the primary aim, based on the word of God, is for us to bring them to the saving grace of God. So that they will repent, they will stay away from their what? From their sin. While I was preparing this message, it occurs to me that the moment you go out for evangelism with the aim of bringing people to your church, you will end up evangelizing unrepentant Christians. And thank God for what we heard in Sunday school today. And what, that is what we see in different churches. We see mixed multitude in the church. And when we ask ourselves question, we say, yes, we went for evangelism and we get this person, we minister to this person. But rather what we ended up doing is that we ended up preaching our church to them. It's not maybe we are not going to tell them about the church. But the primary focus is what? For them to repent. After they repent of their sin, they give their life to Christ, then you will now invite them to a Bible-believing church. And that is when the issue of church comes in. But a lot of people, when we go out for evangelism, our primary aim is that I want them to come to my church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the mandate and commission is to go and preach the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ to all nations. Let's look at first Acts chapter 1 verse 8. As I said, I just want to lay a foundation today. We're not going to take much of our time. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let me take it from verse, from verse 6, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Ma. I said we should read from verse 6 so that we understand what preceded that verse 8. The disciples were asking Jesus a question. But he told them that they should wait. It is not of them to know when. He said, that, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come what upon you. And you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem. I tag Jerusalem as our community. A lot of us, we want to go out for evangelism, but we are neglecting even our own what? Community. We are neglecting our home. Jesus told them that they will start from what? Jerusalem and in all Judea and in all Samaria and then they will go to the uttermost part. As we are seated, you said you are born again. Are there not, or maybe those that have not given their life to Christ? Still within our family members. If we need to start, let's start from there. Praise the Lord. Let's start from our family. Some of us, we have husbands that, what, that are not what? That, that have not given their life to Christ. Witness to him. Some of us, we have wives that are not born again. Witness to them. Some of us, we have children that are not born again, that are still what? Living a life. Witness to them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 5. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with, with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholding thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye, and considereth not the beam that is in thy own eye? And how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the moat out of thy eyes, and behold a beam in thy own eyes? Verse 5. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thy own eyes, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eyes. Praise the Lord. Even we, as we are seated, are we born again? Have we surrendered our life to Christ? You can give what you don't have. Praise the Lord. When you surrender your own life to Christ, then out of passion, I do say something, I say we are saved for us to arise for the salvation of others. The question to us, even when you think that maybe you've given your life to Christ, Ever since you gave your life to Christ, how many souls have you won? How many souls have you witnessed for Christ? How many lives have you touched? I pray God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So from our Bible text, he said you should cast even the moat that is in your own eyes, the beam. Before you can even see the tiny one that is in another person's eyes. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the verse 21 of that same Matthew chapter 7. It said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Praise the Lord. Not everybody. It's so painful this day. I'm from a Christian home. My father is Christian. My mother is Christian. My father is a pastor. My mother is a pastor, Mrs. I pray God we have mercy. The fact that you are from a Christian background does not give you the assurance of what salvation is a personal what experience. When we get to heaven, they will not say this, who, the, who is the father. The son of who are you? Jesus said, I am the way, the life. 
No one can come to the Father except what? Through me. It's only when you have experience of salvation. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So evangelism is a divine assignment and commission that is very dear and close to the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you look at all through the earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, all what he's doing is for the purpose of what? Winning souls. And thank God for our Sunday school this morning. We see that maybe after the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of, um, in the garden of Eden, because of the love of God, God still put a kind of plan in place that he still wants to what? reconcile man back to himself. And he now says, okay, I'm willing to sacrifice my only begotten son. And that is John 3.16 that we read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And thank God for the teacher that took the Sunday school this morning. She lay emphasis that if you believe, Praise the Lord. It's only when you believe. For whosoever believeth in him should not what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So evangelism is something that is so dear to God to the point that we call it the heartbeat of God. And you know, if God said evangelism is his heartbeat, then which means he takes his what? Very seriously. And if you look at the entire ministry of Jesus Christ, it's all about what? Evangelism. Praise the Lord. If you read down that Matthew chapter 7, he said, It's not all them that call me Lord, Lord. And the latter part of it, he would say, have we, have we not cast out demons? Have we not done miracles? But what would be the response that he's going to say? He said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquities. But if you look at that Matthew chapter 28, 28 verse 20 that we said, he said, I will be with you what? All way. He knows at that point that definitely the disciples will encounter trouble. Praise the Lord. So he gave them that assurance that I have gone, no, but I will still what? Be with you. Praise the Lord. So evangelism is of great importance according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 16. The importance of evangelism. I put down here, I say fivefold importance of evangelism. Evangelism is important to the individual believer. If you go out to win soul, if you go out to what to evangelize, is of benefit to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If a believer is to follow the Savior, he must be a fisher of men. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. That's the story of Peter. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. Yes, ma. Ma, please read it from verse 18. Thank you, ma. We all know the story of Peter. He's a professional fisherman. He has toiled all night and caught what? Nothing. But suddenly, Jesus Christ met him and he gave him instruction that deep. He even told him that maybe, ah, we've toiled all night and we caught nothing, but I die word. But immediately, they had a what? Net-breaking catch. But suddenly, he gave him. And he said unto him, follow me and I will make thee a fisher of what? Of men. And the same Peter that the Bible records that he's a timid person. One time that he preached, how many souls were won? 3,000. And the next time again, how many souls? 5,000. Praise the Lord. So it's of benefit to you as a person 
you are saved to rise for the salvation of others. There is reward for evangelism. We are going to read Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 7. But before then, we all hear story of men of God that they will say they have seen their mansion already in heaven. They have seen their estates. They have seen all manner of things. It's as a result of what? The souls that they are winning to the kingdom. Let's look at Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 7. Sorry, man. Luke 15, 1 to 7. Thank you, man. The Lordship. Just one that got missing, he neglected the 99. And he went about searching for just one single one. And immediately he saw that one. What did he do? He put it on the shoulder and he was rejoicing. If you look at that verse 7, he said, I say unto you likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented. Just for one sinner that repented, there will be what? Joy in heaven. Evangelism is also important for the, to the local church. If a church is to grow, you know the other time I said, is not the primary focus for church that you should invite to church. But I later said maybe it's of importance as well. But the first thing should be preach to that person. The message of our Lord Jesus Christ. When that person accepted Jesus, then you now invite the person. So evangelism is also of importance to the church. In order for the church to grow numerically, then we must what? Engage in aggressive evangelism. If the church is to baptize converts into membership regularly, we must what? Engage in aggressive evangelism. Just like what I said earlier on, just within our community, how many people are still wallowing in sin? How many people have not come to realization of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Speak to them. When you talk to one, they will be rejoicing in what? In heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Evangelism is also important in our community. We are all, maybe we just complain about the, about the situation of our community. We have this, we have that, the children are this. If you start from your own home, the Bible says train up your child in the way he should go. When he grow up, he will not what? Depart from it. I do say something. I said there is three circles of influence in the world. Number one is the school. Number two is the church. Number three is the home. But if you look at these three cycles of influence, one has more power than the other. How many hours do we spend in the church in a day? How many times, how many hours do children spend at school? How many times do they spend, how many hours do they spend at home? 
and look at the society that we find ourselves, that children are even given what? Opportunity. So it is high time as parents we should what? Rise up. It is high time as parents we should brace up so that when our children launch into the community, there will be an influence on those outside and not those outside influencing them. Is when we neglect, just like what I said earlier on, is when we neglect our own community, our own immediate family. That is when our children go out, they're going to pick something and bring it back home. And we now start struggling to take it away from them. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 14 to 15. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 to 15. Romans 10, 14 to 15. I read, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? They be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. How can they hear if someone is not going? Just like the passage that we read, go ye therefore into the world. Praise the Lord. I pray God to help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The church has responsibility to reach the community. Even the local church must carefully organize a program of evangelism. The community will not hear except if someone would obey the commission. Evangelism is important to the training and challenging of our youth. Then lastly, evangelism is important because it glorifies God. And gladdens God. That is what is called the heartbeat of God. If you look at Luke chapter 15, verse 10, it talks about the second part of that parable of the lost sheep that we heard. It talks about the lost coin as well. So there is gladness in heaven if you witness to a particular soul. Let's look at John chapter 15, verse 8. John chapter 15, verse 8. John chapter 15, verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so ye be my disciple. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. What are hindrances to evangelism? Number one is lack of personnel. Lack of personnel is one of the major hindrances. A lot of people are no longer willing to go. You are saved. You are sitting down. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 to 38. Whatsoever, whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name, receive me. And whosoever shall receive me, receive me, receive not me, but him that sent me. Verse 38. And John answered him, sorry, I'm reading Mark. Please, if you are in Matthew, Matthew chapter 9. Yes, ma. The harvest really is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest, that he should therefore send what? Laborers into the harvest. That passage will lead us to other what hindrances. I said number one is lack of what personnel. A lot of people have left the work of evangelism to pastors. But from what we've seen in the passage that we've read, is it men did he mention pastors? No. As a child of God, you are to what engage in evangelism. There are different types of evangelism that we can do, but you can do one on one. Within our community, the place that we walk, 
we can what? Witness Christ to others that you see that they've not what? Come to realization of Jesus Christ. Another one is lack of persistence. Even when there are laborers, how often, how consistent are we in carrying out the work of evangelism? Another one is prayer. Lack of prayer is another entrance to evangelism. Before you must set out to go out on evangelism, you must what pray. If you are to share tracts, you need to what pray on those tracts. That anyone that will receive this tract from you, that the word of God should mix up with their word with faith in them. You need to pray ahead that God should bring what? Those that you need to preach to, God should bring them towards your ways. Another one is discouragement. Devil knows that the moment you are going out for evangelism, you are what? Depopulating his kingdom. And he will try as much as possible to bring what? Discouragement your way. I'll tell us two stories quickly before we round up. There is this testimony that I heard of a woman. She was on hospital bed. She was admitted in the hospital. And suddenly, one day she just realized that, okay, on Saturdays I always go out for evangelism. But here she is on the hospital bed. And she looked at herself. What can I do? She just picked up her Bible. And they were passing drip on her. She just removed the drip and put it aside. Maybe she tell a nurse or someone. She put it. She just said, just give me one hour. And within the word that she was, she just went about. She was just what? Preaching to others. Still within the same word. And immediately, she, when she finished, she went back to her be bed and she prayed. And at night, she said she just saw one man in one apparel. Tall just came on her and he started performing operation on her. And the next day when they came, the doctor tried to do all what they want to do. They said, Madam, what happened? And suddenly, the sickness, they could not what, see it again. So that is what what God can do when we obey this mandate. Another one is my own personal experience that devil knows that he wants to use what? To discourage people. In Lagos, we normally go out for prison evangelism. And this day, we just went to police station nearby. On getting to the police station, we always divide ourselves. You are the one that will take the word. You are the one that will take the prayer. And this day, I was the one praying. When I was praying, I was like, maybe I know some of you are here that you are innocent. That you are innocent. You are not guilty of any offense. But you are here. The Lord will liberate you. And we left. Just a few weeks after, I was going for a prayer band meeting. That was in 2011. I was going for a prayer band meeting. And I now saw a yellow bus ahead of me. I was approaching the church. And immediately I saw a man coming towards me with gun. It was like, you, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the church. Look at the church I'm going. And immediately he just pushed me and said, enter into the bus. I was like, I'm going to the church. Initially I was thinking maybe they are armed robbers. But along the line I realized that they are policemen. Immediately I saw one on uniform. I said, okay, no problem. So when one saw me in the bus seated, all of them, they were drunk. When that one saw me, he was like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to church. Look at my Bible. He said, don't you tell him. I said, I told him. He said, let's go. Immediately, the other one, the, the, the one that lead them, he said, immediately he saw us coming. He said, if you come here, I'm going to blast your head with this gun. And he was already drunk. So immediately I said, oh, God will have his way. I just sat down. We get to police station. The same police station that we went to evangelize. That is the same place. And the same cell that we prayed. That was the same cell I went to. And immediately on getting to the police station, I say, God, what do I do? It just occurred to me that just call somebody. 
Immediately I finished the call, they just said, bring your phone. They collected my phone and they asked us to remove our clothes. Eventually, we went into the cell. Immediately, we get into the cell. I just heard, who are those that they just brought? They just said, they just bring meat. And the policemen were already telling us that maybe they, they I think armed robbers came to raid within that community that very, a day before. And they will use our enemy as a replacement in Kirikiri prison. But thank God that I already called. Immediately, it now dawned on me that I was in the same cell praying for people that they were not guilty of any offense and they find themselves there. But here I am. But lo and behold, the person I call quickly ran. The person I call know the DPO, one of the senior DPO in Lagos State, and he rang that person that said, oh, I have someone in Soso Police Station. That person now called and said, please, release so -so, so person. The DPO of that police station was now adamant. You can see how devil works. So he now said, no. Okay. He told that one because he's a senior officer. He said, okay, they will release him. From 9, 10, 8, 10 p.m., not that it was late, 10 p.m., I think I left the cell around 2 a.m. So if not that someone has what? Passion for soul. Do you think that person will go back to do evangelism again? Or do you think that person will still stay? Say, after all, I'm serving God and I still find myself in the cell. So there are lots of ways the devil will what, bring discouragement, but we should not what, be discouraged. Because he has already what, given the promise that he will be with us what, always. And these are things that have bring a lot of people to, what, to the point of backsliding. It's just the what, antics of the devil. So we should not what, give in. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Another thing that maybe will cause discouragement is when you go out. By the time you meet someone and they start firing you questions. When you go out for evangelism, if you do not pray, it's not, evangelism is not bread and meat, bread, bread and butter. You can come in contact with someone that will just give you questions like this, you will be confused. So it's something that we need to what, pray about. And that was why the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 8, it said, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you will now be a witness. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. He said, I did not, God did not want the death of a sinner, but he wants repentance. I pray God will have mercy upon us. Let's rise on our feet this afternoon. I don't know how faithful you are with the work of evangelism. You might not have that time. You might not have that luxury of time to go about in group, but as individual. Just tell it to God this afternoon, Lord, help me. Lord, help me this afternoon. I will pray and let's take it to God that Lord, help me to obey this urgent command. This urgent mandate, Lord, help me this afternoon. That I've heard your word, the grace to be the doer of your word and not the hearer alone. Lord, give unto me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's talk to God that God should give us the grace to obey this urgent mandate. To evangelize, to win souls for him. Let's ask for grace this afternoon.